the American public, American workers, American families, uh, American businesses and companies uh, are going to have to feel the pain on this. There, we are living uh, under a system of spending and taxes that is unsustainable. Something has to give. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the federal budget outlook. In a war of competing ideas, the debate over the nation's spending and its escalating debt continues. There are plans from expert bipartisan panels, a super committee is working on ways to cut more than a trillion dollars from the president's plan, and hope still remains for a grand bargain between Democrats and Republicans. Restoring and sustaining a robust economy will be a long-term process fraught with challenges and sacrifice, notes senior fellow William Gale as he takes a closer look. There are a number of holes in the budget deal, uh, and while it's important to emphasize that the deal is a, is a step forward in some respects, in particular it reduces the deficit, uh, it also is a very, it also has a, a lot of loopholes in a lot of uh, areas that it exempts that, it, that need to be addressed. In terms of the loopholes, uh, the main issue is that the deal only governs what Congress can do on this one up or down vote. So Congress could literally vote to cut spending within the auspices of the debt deal and then vote to turn around and increase spending outside of the debt deal. Likewise, they could vote to increase taxes within the auspices of the debt deal, the second stage, uh, and then turn around and cut taxes uh, outside of the debt deal. So, so there's no guarantee that the deficit cuts that have been enacted in the deal will actually occur uh, because the deal doesn't cover global actions by the Congress, it just covers this one particular vote that they need to take. And this is one of the things I think that Standard & Poor was worried about when they downgraded the, uh, the United States because that, that, that there were these loopholes in the deal that, so that the deal really didn't commit lawmakers uh, to reducing the deficit. Well, Bill, let's look at what the deal left out. What's missing? In terms of what the deal missed, uh, the two big ones are entitlement and taxes, entitlement spending and uh, taxes. We need to consider both of them. We need to consider them jointly. We cannot solve the deficit uh, situation without cutting entitlements and raising revenues, raising taxes. Sometimes it's kind of hard to understand what the debate is actually about because there is more than one precedent for raising taxes and cutting spending, isn't there? There's a lot of uh, objection to the notion uh, that we need to consider tax increases, but uh, if you look historically at what the U.S. has done, every budget agreement we've had, whether it was the Social Security Agreement in the 80s, the budget deal in the 90s uh, or in the Clinton administration, they all involved combinations of tax increases and spending cuts. And you can see why that's a more stable outcome. It involves everyone sacrificing something. Uh, it involves balance. It involves discipline on both sides of the budget, not just on the spending side, which is what some people want. Uh, because if you just discipline on one side and you have largesse on the tax side, then you will undo the effect of of, uh, of spending cuts. Bill, you are a well-known proponent of tax reform. How does the issue of tax reform factor into this debate? It's most productive to talk about reforming taxes and raising tax revenues at the same time. And that is because uh, reforming the structure of the tax system can make taxes distort the economy less, it can make, it can make taxes fairer, can make them simpler, at the same time that we ask the American taxpayer to pay more. So uh, it's completely reasonable to consider tax reform at the same time as we consider raising revenues. What I don't think is reasonable is to say, is for someone to say they will not consider raising revenues, but they'll consider reform instead. If you're not considering raising revenues, then you're not contributing to reducing the budget deficit there. And so we need to, con we need to con consider both reform and revenue levels at the same time. Well, are lawmakers actually playing politics with our fiscal health? Well, it's all politics. Uh, the, the, uh, and in, in, it, in a sense, it, it should be politics. I mean, there are value judgments here that need 
to be made. And let me be clear, it should be a political decision where I mean political in the sense of society making a choice about what it values. Do we want to cut health care substantially or do we want to maintain health care levels and pay for those health care levels with higher taxes? That's a legitimate choice, a legitimate value judgment that people have to think about. Uh, so it should be uh, a societal value statement uh, in terms of how we want to solve the budget problem. The underlying issue, the reason we have this issue to begin with, is there's an inconsistency between how much we, the American citizens, want from our government and how much we, the American citizens, are, are willing to contribute to our government. So that dilemma, that, that difference needs to be resolved, uh, and it can be resolved in a number of ways, but there's no single right or wrong answer uh, the, right, the right answer depends on what people in society want to do. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.